Hey y'all, I'm Betsy. Hi, I'm Mom. <laughs> From Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another cruise video. <laughs> My dogs want to be in the video so bad. They don't know about the video. They just know we're sitting here and they want to be part of it. But um, today we are going to be doing the question and answer portion for the carnival celebration, which just had its inaugural sailing. Mom and her friend, Miss Kathy, went on the ship. I did not get to go, so I have no insight at all into the ship other than what I've seen um, from mom's videos. She did a whole um, tour of the ship. I will link that down below. She is a very good ship videographer now. No. <laughs> she not will really. be videoing all the future ships for you. I don't count on that. <laughs> and uh, we have a couple questions that y'all left on that video. I have a few questions that I've gathered from other people's cruise videos while well, I've been checking out the celebration kind of mm -hmm. ship tours. And there's a few people who did like embarkation day videos because getting on a new ship versus an established ship can be a little different. Somebody have the hiccups? Perfect. Um, and then I wrote down a few of my own questions. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in and start with the first question. So I've just got my laptop here. I figured I figured I'd put them on my phone or I'd write them out and be discreet. And then I was like, why? I'm just going to put my laptop right here on the counter. So first question, we're planning to take a cruise on the celebration this summer with kids. The airfare to get there is expensive. They must live somewhere else. Where is the celebration porting out of Miami? Uh, Miami. Which is kind of a far port. It's not super central unless you're in Florida. It's like... Even then, it's... I, I was going to say, because we live 30 minutes from Florida, and it's still an eight-hour drive. Longer. Yeah. All right, so the airfare to get there is expensive with kids, um, or expensive for where, from where we are. I'm sure the excursions aren't cheap either. Do you, re do you recommend this ship for families with kids? I think that's two questions. Do you recommend the ship for families with kids, and is this ship specifically worth going to if there's a cheaper ship closer to where they are. Less expensive. Mm -hmm. um, well, the Celebration is a great ship. It has a lot of things for kids to include the bolt. Um, That's the roller coaster. Roller coaster. But it's in Miami, which is at the very south part of Florida. But its sister ship, the Mardi Gras, That's true. is in Port Canaveral, which is a little more centrally located, also very close to Orlando. So I would say either ship would be great for kids. Um, in the summertime even? In any time, at any time. Um, probably the Mardi Gras is going to be a little less expensive than the Celebration Because it's as been well. out for a little bit. Because it's been out a little Not longer quite than as the Celebration. Exciting. Celebration is newer. So I would say either one of those ships is great. Um, but I, I don't know exactly where you are. But um, Miami is pretty far south. So I feel like unless you're in the southeast of the U.S., hard. it can be a little hard to get there. We very rarely even cruise out of Miami because it's just easier it's so to get far. to New Orleans or to Orlando, Orlando from where we Mobile. are. We we are close to within six hours. Of now, if you're near a, a you know a, a larger airport that flies into Miami without mm -hmm. it being super expensive. Right. then that might change things for you to fly directly there. But even for us, our nearest airport is not a large airport. It's a tiny little airport. And so flying into Miami becomes a two or three stop flight, even though it's eight, nine hours from us. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, just not worth located. it unless we did it once to go on the horizon, which was docked there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was worth it for that specific ship. So there, there are a lot of great ships. Yeah. If and you are specifically trying to get on the celebration, then yeah. only you can decide if that's worth it for you or not. But the Mardi Gras is a sister ship. It's almost identical. Um, the Panorama is out of California. It's not identical, but similar. But the Panorama and the Horizon and, and the Vista. They're the are next sister class ships. down. That's the next class down. They're, um, the Panorama's in, Flor in uh, California. California. The Vista's in Galveston. And the horizons in Miami also. That those are great ships. So if say the horizon 
and the celebration were in the same port. It did not cost you any more to get from one ship to the next. Would you say the celebration is worth it with kids over the horizon? Like those two classes um, of ships? Not really. They have almost the same um, amenities on it. The only the big difference is the boat roller coaster is on the celebration. So if you really want to do things Mardi Gras. like that. And I do think from your ship tour, it seems like the area up top. Um, like the top decks where the water park were, yes. were, were was, putt-putt, um, putt, 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 well, all of that, well, yeah. there was quite a bit more up there. The Horizon, of course, has those kinds of areas, but they're not as large. Yes. Is that worth going all the way to Miami? I, I don't think so, but maybe. I personally like the Horizon class better. I do too, but I've never the, been the on the celebration. All, but that's also because I like some of the features that the Mar the Horizon. We like has the Havana. More. Yeah, and they have it, a uh, Havana area on the celebration but and the Mardi the Gras. Same. But it is not the same. It's on the side of the ship, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and go on to the second question. Okay. So number two is. Thanks so much for showing this. You're welcome. I'm boarding the celebration on December 4th. That's exciting. Any must-dos on this ship? Also, how are the bands? I love to listen to most of the bands while cruising, but I find some ships have better bands than others. I don't know that we're going to be great at answering that question. We don't listen to a lot of well, the bands. Well, they had a lot of uh, bands in different places, like the Pig and Anchor has a band, which oh. is really good. There was a band and some singers that were in center stage. They were very good as well. Um, unfortunately, we're a little late answering this because they were already on the cruise. If they're on, they're on the fourth. Yeah. So <laughs> I hope you have you a good You should comment and let us know how the bands are. <laughs> so, But yeah, they had all the bands um, participated on the center stage, and we got to see all the different bands. The guy in the piano bar is fabulous. I always hear such good things about the piano bar, and we rarely... I mean, not rarely. I've never been to the piano bar. I've been a couple Mom's times. Mom's been. But it, uh, we're not much to We're not and big go out and, and we don't drink. really drink. So, so, yeah. Unless they're really good, I'm not going to go like pay a lot of money for a Diet Coke at the piano bar. Right. That's kind of our dilemma there. So. And I'll bring a Diet Coke almost anywhere on the ship, but it's a little much to bring one we to a bar. We also really like to go to the shows. So, so we typically go to the shows at night and instead so of the piano instead bar. of the piano bar or the other places right. where they may be playing music. Mm -hmm. So sounds like they have a lot of good bands. They do. I don't know right now they do. If yes. it's better than anywhere else all no, the time, but they usually do have, you know, mm -hmm. the best of the best on the newest biggest ship right when it comes out. Right. So I would guess right now on December 4th sailing, which it's the 11th, you're probably getting ready to get off today. It's Sunday. You probably had great bands for this ship. Yep. All right. Oh, this is, this is one I picked specifically for mom. This person <laughs> asks, okay, did you find any rubber ducks on the ship? Ah. Uh. In January, I found four on the Mardi Gras. We will be cruising on the celebration for three weeks in the new year. We have the same cabin. I will be bringing rubber ducks to put up so people can find them. I love how it puts smiles on people's faces. I found one duck. So if you don't know. On the last day Mom of the is cruise. obsessed with finding yes. ducks. And obsessed. I, I looked, I looked, I looked, I looked. But I'm not... Mom's not very good at finding ducks. Most people that find a lot of ducks get up and go early. And I'm not a get up and go early girl. If you don't so. go early, 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 or yes. late, late, late. Yeah. If you just go, like, on your way to dinner yeah. or on the way to a show. Like, these are the times when everybody's out on the right. ship. So. And so any ducks that are out are found very, very quickly. You have to be yes. specifically duck hunting to find ducks. Now... We do go specifically duck hunting sometimes. Right. Usually more late at night. And usually late at night. And that is usually when we find the most ducks. Right. But this time, I will tell you, the ship I was on, we had seven sea days in a row. Plus, we had a couple sea days at the beginning. We had a 14-day cruise. We only had four ports. So there were a lot of sea days. And people were putting um, out ducks because I saw them on the yes. Facebook group posting they were them all the time. time. Putting out ducks. And some people found a lot of ducks. Yeah. But I found one, and Kathy didn't find any. She was very jealous. 
and it was pitiful because I walked into an elevator and it was sitting on the railing. Like, <laughs> hello, I'm right here. They didn't even try to hide it. I, it was a miracle I found it. So I just lucked out. The person who got off the elevator before me must have left it there for poor pitiful me to find. To be so. fair, our last cruise, I think we found eight or nine ducks all together. And mom only found... I found four. Four of those... And two were because she made friends with one of the guys putting out That's ducks. Right. I did. I did. No, and I found six ducks on that one. I found four the last night that were no. put out the same night. <laughs> she found the same four person. in a row. Four in a row. Boom, 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 boom. And I told her not to take them all. But I did. But she did anyways. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a duck She has pig. no remorse. Duck, she loves duck, them. Duck piggy. And she has them all displayed yes. next to her. I, I, I'm going to put it, put them all in a big jar. She's planning to put... Put them in her craft room, but right now they're just all on her windowsill right next to her bed. I have a lot. So she can see them every day. Yes. Right, Cinnamon? Yes. Cinnamon is pretty convinced a rubber duck would be a great dog toy. Yes, I'm sure she did. All right, you ready for the next question? Yes. <laughs> okay, so love you too and your cruise videos. That's nice. As someone with knee issues who cannot do ladders, we are on that same trip. Um, it would be helpful to show the entrances to the pools and hot tubs, which we never do. Oh yeah, um, I never thought of that. Do you know if they are all ladders, steps, zero entry? Something I'm always straining to see. Thanks, Judith. We never show that, and I think it's been a while. I think they are ladders. Since we've been to one of the main decks with the pool. Um, so yeah. I think there are probably a few that I've seen like on the main areas that are not ladders. Like by the... I haven't seen them. By Guy's Burgers and things. That pool usually is more of a walk-in. But no, I'll tell no, you... They're not zero entry. They're not at all. Well, they have like that lip around the side where people sit. Right, but that's still not zero. No, it's not. It's it's like a... It's like a little wading pool. By yeah, feet. it's like a little wading pool. But it's not It's not zero entry. And the few pools that I've been in are usually the Havana pool and hot tubs and the Serenity pool or hot tub at times. They have all been ladders. And I have, I have knee issues a lot. Like... I couldn't walk for three or four months with my knee issues. What was that? Almost a year and a half ago now. So I'm doing a lot better, but I know it's definitely a little hard to get out of that ladder in the, in the pool. Now the ones for the hot tubs are stairs. They're much easier. Um, but the actual pools are ladders. Now they do have, like mom said, it's a wading pool. And then it goes down into the regular pool. And so the ladder takes you from the pool to the waiting portion. So like my brother will just swim up to the edge of the waiting part and he man himself out of the pool into the waiting part. And if you have the upper body strength to do that, you can skip the ladder altogether. Right. I also don't have that. So, yeah. but hot tubs are steps. Which is great. Half the time, that's all you want, especially at night. I usually, specifically, that's one of the reasons I like the Havana area so much, is my knee bothers me. And I will go sit in the hot tub every single evening. It helps so much when you're walking around right. on these big ships. It is good. So. They're very big ships. Yeah. All right. Love the ship tour. You guys are seriously great. We know. Thanks, Cinnamon. I'm sailing at the end of the month on the 27th. I'm so excited slash overwhelmed at everything to do on the ship. I think I'm going to need more than a week. Quick question. Do you know what the lunch options are on embarkation day? Oh, you can go everywhere. Just like you can go up to Lido, go to the buffet. You can go to guys. Um, we went to Cucina del Capitano. As I said, they usually have yep. most of the specialty restaurants Are open at lunch. for lunch on the first day. Yeah. Uh, you can go to Shebang on the celebration, which is Mexican-Asian, which is an odd combination, but it's okay. It's good. It's good. Um, I'm trying to think. <laughs> you, 
I don't remember if you could go to the sushi, bonsai sushi. Um, I've never seen it open on the first day, but... You can go to pizza, and the pizza is in a different location on the celebration. It's down kind of by um, Emeralds and the Main Street area, <laughs> which is kind of neat. It's kind of neat. I don't know. I like it. I like it by the pool for easy access, but I've never it's, liked how loud it is by the pool. Right. Because the pool is like, that main pool is like the hopping in, happening oh, yes. place to be. Oh, and, and especially on the first yes. day, like they're playing the live music, the like the fun crew is all out there dancing and yes, singing. It's and it's just crazy. And that's great fun for a little bit of time. But it's loud. It is but loud. it's very loud. And there's also like the Blue Iguana Cantina is open for lunch, which is back by the pool. And... Pig and Anchor is open for lunch, which is, we went there, yeah. Pig and Anchor. That's actually where we went on the first day, was Pig and Anchor. I didn't, and it was I great. wasn't there. And then they have this place that's back by um, the Blue Iguana. It's called Street Eats. And they have three, four little booths you go to, and you can get just, just a sampling of a little something. Like, we got these loaded fries, and then they had kebabs, and then they had an Asian thing. And, oh, and then they have the... Um, Seafood shack right there also. So there's all kinds of things open on the first day. It's kind of like they're, you know, they put their best foot forward. Right. Plus okay. they want to, typically they're trying to distract you from your rooms not being ready. You True. know? True. Although I think your rooms are ready on the, on the on, first day. On they are, our rooms sailing. are ready because nobody had been in them before. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Ooh, awesome video guys. Question. Was there anything about this cruise that was not what you expected? Well, Center Stage, they do some of the shows at Center Stage, and then they do some other ones back in what they call the theater um, and Spectrum Theater. And Center Stage, I liked it, but it was... It was hard to get seats. It was very hard to get seats. Some some of the shows, people were showing up four hours in advance to get seats. Which kind of defeats the point. And then they kind of stayed there. They kind of camped out. They just out. camped out. So that was kind of frustrating. Um, but it, it, it was kind of weird. Like if you sat downstairs, they had aerial things that you couldn't see because it, 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 there was a ceiling. So you could only, unless you were really close to where the stage was, you, you could look directly. You up. could look up and see the aerial things. Now on the second, the seventh floor, they had some stadium seating. You could see the aerial stuff really, really well, but the stage, you couldn't see what was down on the main floor. So that that was a little odd. It's but like it, you had to see the right. show from every floor to see the full right. show, and 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 that's not an option. And there just wasn't enough um, space for you to see the show more than once. Yeah. So. Was I it think, always the same show that they no, did? No, they had different shows there, which was kind of good. They did the mm. Celestial Strings there, which was great. We saw that on the horizon. And then they did two new shows. One was a circus show, and one was, uh, I can't think of what the last one was called, but they were very, very good. But, um, yeah, it, it the seating was definitely an issue. I, think I kept one seeing thing, that on the Facebook group yeah. that people were really complaining about the seating the being seating. an issue. Yeah. Because people were saving seats. Oh, people would and go people up and were save camping entire out. rows. Yeah. And, and finally. I'm glad I wasn't there then because typically as the youngest person in our group, <laughs> I am sent to save seats, which yes. I don't mind. Like if we're just leaving dinner and going to the show right. and I just need to get there before mom does. Right. I'm only saving a seat for a minute, you know? Right. I'm not going to go four hours, four hours to save her a seat. And then, You're on your and own And then lady. they didn't even show up. People didn't even always show up. Yeah. Like, I went and sat down one place, and this guy told me, well, somebody's coming, but if they don't come, you can stay. And then the person, they had saved, like, eight seats, and only two people showed up. So it was a little frustrating. And they kept making announcements that mm -hmm. you can't save seats. I think what they're going to end up having to Hi. do is some kind of a bracelet-type thing where... You get this bracelet to go to this uh, CD. More of a reservation kind mm -hmm. of thing. I think they're going to have to. It's just not. I don't and that's what a lot of people were lately. suggesting. But I don't know. Who knows? So. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question. Okay. So, 
Oh, I don't know if we can answer this one. It says, I love you guys. Please let us know how this ship compares to the Mardi Gras and which one you liked best. Mm. Hope you had an amazing time. We haven't been we on, haven't the, Mardi been on Gras, the Mardi Gras yet. So we can't really answer this one, but I still screenshotted it because I did want to talk about the difference between the Celebration class and the Horizon class that well, we talked about a little bit already. And I did want to say, Kathy has been on the Mardi Gras and Ooh, the Celebration. We should phone a friend. And um, she is <laughs> on the Mardi Gras as we speak. We should she, phone a friend on the Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, she, she messaged me yesterday and she was leaving. I think she went on the Freedom and then she went for five days. Miss Kathy is a travel agent, so she travels she a travels lot. travels more than I do. And we travel a lot. And she's diamond, so she gets, yeah. into, she has, yeah, she, she's very proud of herself. Although, well, I won't say that. You, you keep going. I was going to say, she's a travel agent, but mostly for her family. Yeah. She got true. she has a big family. She does. They all go yeah. places. But yeah, she's on the Mardi Gras right now. And I think she told me that she there were very few differences between the celebration and the Mardi Gras, and she liked them both. So. No big difference. No, she didn't think there was any big differences that I could remember. What is the Havana area being at the back of the ship versus the side of the ship, the main that's one of the difference well, between no, the, the, the Carnival the, and Horizon class. The Horizon, um, the Havana area with the pool and the hot tub is all in the rear on right. deck five. And then they have a few decks above on deck six and deck seven. But on the Mardi Gras, <laughs> the, the Havana area is on deck eight, I believe it is. But they don't have a pool. Hmm. And they have a hot tub, which is on the side. And so a lot of people do not care for it as much on the on the, the celebration and the Mardi Gras class. It's, <laughs> it's called the Excel class. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. Half of the point of the Havana area is that it has the private pool and, and hot tubs. It's very exclusive. And it's, yeah. it's very exclusive. So you can go back there. And I, I go almost every day when we're on right. those ships because you're paying for it. You might as well use it. Right. Um, and I think the most people I've ever seen in that pool is, you know, like seven, eight people, seven, eight people, even you get if, to know the people, it's that's how few people, there even are. if the whole area is full, very few people are actually in the pool because they're not kids. You right. can't have kids back there. And nobody under the age of 12. So most of the people who are back there are, are sunbathing in the loungers or they're sitting at the bar. Like they're not yeah. necessarily in the pool reading books. Yeah. And they also have the whole, like, seating area in the waiting part of the pool. So a lot of people will sit in those seats with just their right. feet in the water. Right. But they're not full-on in the pool. Right. And the pool has, you know, like, the whole waterfall effect with the glass. And you can see the whole back of the ship, which is, which is nice. really nice. Yeah. When we were on the um, horizon. horizon and the panorama that has mm -hmm. the Havana... Like, we would go back there to see whales and things when we were on that ship. Yeah. Because you can see through the glass from the pool. You could see the whales mm -hmm. and the ocean. That was amazing. Yeah. So, I would say that's the biggest thing. But if you're not in a Havana cabin, if you're in a regular interior or balcony cabin, there's is there a big advantage of paying to go on this celebration versus the Horizon class? Well... On the celebration, the Excel class, they also have this thing. It's called, um, I can't think of what it's called now, but it's a special place that has cabanas. Uh, it's something 19. I, I just can't remember what it's called. I like cabanas, but it's, I'm a, it's quite, quite loft 19. I'm not quite friends with the sun. It's very expensive. Extremely yeah. expensive. I'll but just it's bring an very, umbrella. Very, very exclusive. Very, very <laughs> exclusive. So, I mean, we're talking a thousand dollars for the week. Yeah, just bring an umbrella. It's quite expensive. So it's it's out of my purse range. Well, mom doesn't like to pay for anything, so that doesn't no. take much. I, 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 my whole thing is, you know, get as much bang for your buck and get to go as much as you can. Unless there's a Havana balcony or not balcony, a Havana cabin. Or we're cruising with someone else that we're like splurging on a Havana balcony. We only did that once because we brought right. my brother and it was, what was it? My 30th. It was your 30th, my 60th, and, and his graduation. His graduation from college. from college. And we splurged on a Havana balcony. No, we. It was splurged. a cabana. It, we 
splurge on a Havana suite. It was a sweet cabana. It was very And so nice. it, it, you could walk right out to the pool. And that's the most expensive room we've ever had. Uh, yeah, we usually do interiors or... Mom and I rooms. pick the cheapest cabin on the ship most mm -hmm. times so that... So that we can spend our money on other things like right. excursions or you know you're not in your room that much. If souvenirs. you are, I, I lay on my bed and mom's leave. in the room all the time. I lay I on my bed. I can hardly get her to leave. Uh, the best cabin that we had was on the Pride though. That was an interior and it was a 4K and it yes. had a window. We showed that cabin. That was a great cabin. But I don't know. I I liked the Horizon for the Havana area. If you're not in the Havana area. I almost prefer the smaller ships like the Pride mm -hmm. and that class of ship because it's not as much walking to get to everything. Yeah, that's true. And so you can really, you know, I find myself going out and exploring more mm -hmm. as opposed to if you have to walk miles and miles to get somewhere. Yeah. Some of the big ships are really I just, big. my We're name is like too bad. Two football fields long. They're huge. All right. So would you do another transatlantic sailing? Oh, yeah. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Um, I think most people are a little apprehensive when they see that, like, seven-day sea yeah. day tag. But we literally were, like, the first couple days, we're like, oh, this is going to, like, be kind of boring after a while. And after about the third day, we're like, oh, no. We only have a few more days. Oh, no. We only have a couple more days. And we felt like, oh, we have to go do more stuff. So I wonder if it would really be different if it was the it. other way around and you had the transatlantic part first. And then I don't know ports after that. If you would still feel that sort sense of like the last couple of days of a cruise are always like, oh, the cruise is ending. Let's do all yeah. the things. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that would make a difference or not. I don't know, but we did. We did a lot more the last two days than we did the first five days. But we relaxed a lot. One day, like um, we didn't even get dressed until dinner time. <laughs> We just That's watched pretty movies. normal for you. We watched on-demand movies in our cabin, free movies. We loved it. So very exciting. Yes, but you know, after you know, we had been in, we had already been in Europe. We had been in Paris for three days, and then we were in London for a day, and then we did four days of 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 uh, a week of stopping at ports. We were tired. Yeah, <laughs> it was tired. Well, I mean, sometimes the best part about a cruise is. The relaxing. the relaxing part of it is that you're on vacation and you don't have to go, go, go. No. That's part of what I like about a cruise as like, opposed to... Where are we eating dinner tonight? <laughs> that was our big, big thing. As opposed <laughs> to if you just go to Europe and then you feel like every single second of the day has to be filled with Europe. You have to do stuff. Because you you're in stuff. Europe. Because you, you aren't going to be back. When you're on a cruise, you, you still have that feeling when you're in a port of, I have to do everything in every port. But at least when you're on the ship, you feel like you can take a break, yeah. which is nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you going to roll the next one, Shiggy? I did enjoy it, though. I did enjoy it. Now, Kathy's getting ready to go on a Trans-Pacific cruise for 30 days. She is going from Seattle. She, I'm very, very Yeah, jealous. I want to go on this one. She's going from Seattle to Alaska for a couple, three days. Then they go across the ocean, and then they go to Japan for five days. And then they go, I know they're going to Indonesia and... The whole itinerary sounds amazing. I want to say amazing. the Philippines, and they end up in Australia. And so it's 30 days. And It's the same um, time we already have a cruise booked for Greece, or, or we would we'd be, be going. Yeah. But I'm really hoping that they do it again, because if they do it again, I think I, they might. People I were go. very, very responsive to it. Although being gone for 30 days. We were gone for 30 We were gone for 25 days. Yeah. Like, but that was supposed to be one of our really big extra long trips. Like, it we was. can't do a 30-day cruise. Every year. Every year. Unless y'all start subscribing and liking these cruise videos. That's right. More That's and right. more and more. Because we did, we did way more videos for that Pride trip on the Carnival Pride than I was planning to. And people are loving them. So... Yeah, but that was such a fun. It was yeah, fun. and I, I was worried that filming everything would make it feel like work and less like a vacation, but I didn't mind it. I enjoyed yeah, she it. She likes filming. I like, like filming now. I, I didn't to used to. It is it is a little bit like, it's like a diary. scrapbooking, yeah. but visually, which right. I enjoy. Mom and I both love to scrapbook, but we don't have time or right. money. So we're going to get back to that one of these days. But in yes, the meantime... 
I have found that blogging and videoing and vlogging is yeah. very similar. It is. I can look back at almost anything in my last 10 years and it's somewhere on my blog. That's true. Mm -hmm. All right. Inaugural sailing. So with this being inaugural sailing, short of like when you got on the ship, all the rooms were ready because nobody had ever That's been right. in them. Um, and I imagine there was like, was there anything special for it being an inaugural sailing or was it just people walking around saying this is an inaugural sailing? Well, <laughs> ladybug, they, they really hyped it up, yeah. but, um, they bring in, they brought in a bunch of the crew from the Mardi Gras hmm. because they had already been on that class of ship, but then the rest of the crew were new. Um, so it was interesting. We, here, but we had a lot of really good crew members. And it was really exciting because there were people on there that we knew. And Dusan was there. Dusan, he's he's one of our favorite waiters. He is not a waiter anymore. He's an assistant meter D. Yes, because he got married and promoted and, and had promoted a baby since we've known him. And then uh, Gabby and was on there. there. She was we like Gabby. She's the comedy, uh, club, comedy club manager. manager. So, um, well, Greg is a, still our favorite waiter and he was yes, not there. He was not there. But, um, one of our other waiters, Alec Mott, that I had on the celebration, Alexander had been on the pride this summer. He remembered us from the pride. It's amazing. The people that work on the ship, they remember you. They remember your name. Well, to be fair, mom's a little much. She's <laughs> easy to remember. No, 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 no. But you know what? We, we have our favorites. We do have yeah. our favorites. So. All right. What's the difference, and there's not always a difference, but what's the main difference between a transatlantic and an inaugural? I got that question a lot, even though. Well, the inaugural, and the, ours really wasn't the inaugural. The inaugural is supposed to be the first sailing. With people on it. With people on it. But we were the maiden sailing, which is the same, but the inaugural was once it got to Miami, they kind of decided. She did. Yeah. They decided to do the inaugural at in Miami and they flew in a lot of celebrities and they did a special um concert with cool and the gang you got up and saying celebrate celebration celebrate. since it's the song oh, lady would be so good at that yeah and they um so that was kind of neat we all get a special inaugural book about the ship it's Ooh, coming a coffee in the table mail. book yep it's beautiful um we did get some special little they gave us Little, there were some uh, pens and things I want to say people had, we but had was that just the normal like platinum diamond pens? Those were platinum and diamond pens, but they gave us also like a, um, a luggage tag that said inaugural on it, celebration, maiden, cruise. I don't think there's a difference between maiden and inaugural. I think Carnival was just like... They were just kind of trying to help come up us with some new names. Not be, we were a little frustrated that we weren't the inaugural. Because they really were. Because we really were. But it was really good. It was really fun. We were supposed to be on but the But transatlantic just means a cruise that right. goes across the Atlantic. There are... Like how Miss Kathy is going on a trans-Pacific that goes over the Pacific. Pacific. Yeah. So that... I mean, you can do a transatlantic or a trans-Pacific yeah. at any time if it's crossing that ocean. The Pride has done trans-Pacific mm -hmm. the last two years. A lot of times, if the ships are just going back and forth to Europe, they're doing more cruises they're in doing Europe. They're a lot more of them. Which means they have to send ships there. But then during the slow season in Europe, they bring the ships back. So they just, that's a transatlantic. And or they're a trans just doing a lot more of them because when I first started with Carnival eight years ago, um, the Vista was the first ship that I, that came out in Europe while. We should have done this on the couch if the dogs were going to sit with us, but yeah. I didn't realize they were going to want to. But it was the first ship that did a transatlantic and inaugural and. Then it was like one a year. Now there's yeah. like three or four ships going back and forth. So it's Well, and when nice. we booked the, even the Greece trip that we're going on this summer, there was, that's one of the reasons we booked it so fast was because they hadn't been doing tours right. in Greece. And of all the tours we've seen in Greece, was this was the best itinerary we've seen that has well, Santorini, Santorini which, is really to to. which is the sh the island I really want to go to. Otherwise, they port into Athens and you have to take a day trip to Santorini, which includes a ferry ride, and the ferry ride cuts into your day. Yeah. Um, and if the seas are too rough, the ferries don't go. So you could get all the way to Europe and then not get to Santorini on your day trip, yeah. as opposed to, you know, there's 
knock on wood, don't want the dogs to bark, but you know, there's, there's always a reason. Like when we were on the pride, we were supposed to go to Sweden and no. we, yeah, that's true. Sweden. Yeah. To Gothenburg, Stock, Stockholm. Stockholm. And we didn't get to go because the seas were too rough that day. So even the big ships sometimes have problems getting into a port with rough weather. Right. Um, because just cause it's not that rough out on the ocean doesn't mean it's not too rough to port to a dock. And we were going to a floating And we were going dock. to a floating dock, which... Is even worse. I don't need to go to a floating dock in rough weather. No. I no. barely want to go to a floating dock in calm weather. So, when I saw the ship was going to Santorini, to dock in Santorini for the whole day, I was like, that is the ship I want to be yeah. on. Yeah. But, you know, you can go on a transatlantic or a transpacific at any time, whenever they're available, Whereas an inaugural or a maiden is and the first of a ship. They're just transitioning a ship from one place to another. Like um, the Pride would, had been sailing in Northern Europe all summer. And then it repositioned down to Italy and sailed down in Italy the remaining fall, couple months, months in, in fall before it repositioned back to the United States. And sometimes repositioning, you can get really good um, deals. Because not as many people want to go on just yeah, a reposition. A lot of people can't take a, uh, a reposition. A month off. Yeah, they can't take a lot of people, And off. it's usually like 14 days for a transatlantic at, at the minimum. Because they're not just going to put you on the ship and then ship you over the ocean. They're going to take you to a few ports at, right. at least. Right. So not everyone can take 14 days off. Yeah, it's a little like, tough. Like crazy lady here. Yep. All right. All right. So the next question we kind of already answered was two parts. Did you ever get bored with there being so many sea days? And no, not really. with it being a transatlantic voyage with so many sea days, did they change the itinerary at all to add more things to do on those sea yes, days? there were more things to do on the sea days. I had a feeling a they more. did. What kind of things were they? They just did more... Um, they had, more bingo. Oh, they started with. Um, they always have bingo. Carnival loves their bingo. Yeah, they they have carnival bingo daubers. So. Yeah, I was a little surprised. I went on a cruise with just my brother last year, which was not planned. Mom was supposed to come with us, and then everything got discombobulated. And one of the days we were there, Will was like, "I want to go to bingo." And I told him it cost money, and he did not want to go to bingo anymore. Um, they had. Uh, comedy shows starting at four o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, that's nice. So that was nice. Four o'clock, and then they had another one at five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like that. They didn't have so many late, late ones, but they I started. Guess they out figure early. people are going to bed early, and they brought in a new comic every three days. Like when we were in port, they had them, and then they brought in like six comics right before we left Europe to start the transatlantic part. Oh. And they did the first three, and then those people had a break, and then the, did the next three. So that's good. So they do plan for it a little they bit. They did plan. They had more comics, um, and they had they had kept some of their shows until after we were on the transatlantic part. Some of the new shows? The new shows. Yeah, the two new shows yeah. were while we were on the transatlantic part. And they did... Um, they did a really nice tea, afternoon tea. Mom loves tea. And they did um, the veterans... They, because it was over Veterans Day. So oh, yeah. They did a big veteran celebration. So that was nice. We had a veteran on the ship that had been in World War Two. He hmm. was like 96, 97, something like that. Are you going to be cruising when you're 96? You betcha. I am. Grandma is 78? 80, 86. 86. I lost a few years there. Yeah. Um, she doesn't even want to go to Red Lobster most days. Yeah, but she went with me on Friday. We went shopping. She had a blast. She was tickled. I was not invited, so we don't need to talk about that. Yes. How did check-in go? I have heard oh, check -in so many different things. was atrocious. But I have to say the reason why it was so bad, it took a long time. They had us in a line, and it went, it went down the sidewalk to the door, back, all the way back up and then back around down again. It took over an hour just standing in that line. But we were moving the whole time, so that wasn't too bad. They had a surprise inspection right before embarkation. Oh, okay. So that's so not their it wasn't, fault. It wasn't Carnival's fault, but they 
should have explained it to us better because people were frustrated. And, you know, it's like, okay, folks. Because with the cabins being ready, you would think check-in would go would be smoothly and easily. But and also you have to remember the people who work the port, now they do work that port in Southampton for other cruise ships. Mm -hmm. They just work the port. They don't necessarily they don't, work Carnival port. Right, exactly. So they did bring in some new Carnival people, but it... It, it was crazy, but that was the reason why. But mm -hmm. I will tell you, when we finally did get on the ship, our luggage was already in our cabin. So the porters weren't having problems, just no. the people checking it's you just in. the people checking in. It just took a long... It, that inspection... So once you got on the ship... It, we couldn't get on the ship. Getting on the ship the was the hard part. The Coast Guard inspected the ship is something to the effect of the coast guard which i don't know what is that because it was a new mean. ship maybe or yes, it's something to do with it being a new ship in england so if you were going on an inaugural faux inaugural sailing again would you pick a later check-in time to try to avoid that or do you think it's just unavoidable it was, all day. It was i don't think there's the people that came after about one o'clock might have been better it was better for them those of us who came I want to say after mom usually wants to get on the ship right away. There were so many diamond and platinum members on the ship. There were about 4,000 people on the ship, 4,500 people on the ship over half were diamond and platinum. So all of those people get priority. So all of those people, so there was no priority, be priority yeah. if <laughs> half the cruise is people who are priority. So that was another thing was expectations. So. All right. That's the last question. But we <sighs> actually, um, we took the National Express bus down from London, which is the bus that's just open to the general public. It was not a chartered bus. It wasn't. Because we took a chartered bus last time from London to Dover. Yeah. And it was great. Um, I did. We did a video on but it. But it was. But it was, it was expensive. expensive and it did. I mean, it was a, it was a nice bus and we had a tour guide who told us all about the places mm -hmm. we were seeing and about Dover. Um, but it wasn't really an excursion of any kind. No, there was, you could have gone to you Dover Castle. You could pay extra to go to Dover and Castle. And we just didn't because we didn't want to spend all our money on that. No. And so like, it was great, but it right. wasn't necessarily like. It wasn't it, necessary. Yeah. If there was a just regular bus we there could have is. taken to if Dover, we, we didn't yet. know about it yet, um, that would have been preferable. And it was it was about $100 a piece. For the chartered one. For the chartered one. But whereas the National Express bus, I think I paid 16 pounds for the two of us yeah. to get on the bus. Now, so Plus with, 16 pounds with for the our National luggage. Express one, <laughs> did you have to... I booked did it your, online. No, I mean, did your luggage go under the bus? Yes. Or luggage. did it go on the bus? It went under the bus. So did you have to put it under the bus or nope. did you give it to somebody? The bus driver put it under the bus. So there you go. And um, and like I said, I paid 16 pounds. That was for two people to go on the bus. Plus I paid 16 pounds for, we each had two suitcases and they only allow you to have one suitcase. So I paid an extra. Because they each had a suitcase each. and a carry-on, right? Right. And then we each had a backpack. So, because we were going to be on the ship for so long. Yeah. And then... Um, Don't lie. Mom always has a lot of luggage. And then we pay... I paid an extra five pounds each. I'm going to start to charging you a seats. luggage handling fee. Because when we uh -huh. travel together, she expects me to also handle uh -huh. her luggage. That's perks of being the mom. Mm. So. There are no longer perks. I'm charging a, so. a luggage handling fee. And then once we got <laughs> into to Southampton at the bus station. And it literally is like the national bus. It's like trailways. So, so was it a long walk from the oh bus no, we station to, or we did you get, get a Uber. taxi we or get an Uber? You have to get it. How Uber. much was the Uber? 20. Yeah. Under 20 pounds, 12 pounds, something like that. And right now the pounds are pounds to dollars less. are very similar They're right real. now. I think They're not like, always, but I think they are the right pound now. is like a dollar 20. So yeah. the pound is a little bit more. But it's actually very good. Because I think the last time we went to London, it was like $2 to the pound. Well, last time being 2007. Yeah. It was a yeah. Lot. Yeah. This year was a lot more Did you have effective. any Ubers or taxis this time around that didn't take your card? 
No, all of our Ubers and all of our taxis took our credit cards. We had one in Dover on our last trip that did not take card and wanted cash. And I was reading one review that said when they do that, they really can't. That, that they really can't do that. That yeah. you, they have to pay. They have to offer the tap. And we could have told them, no tap, no money, and just walked away. But obviously, we had right. cash, so we just right. gave them cash. But um, we had to scrounge for that money. Well, it's because it was our very last day in London. We were going back to the show. And we didn't have pounds. And we had, we had, euros. We had plenty of euros, but we had hardly any pounds because we were leaving London. We spent it all. We and spent we it all on purpose. We spent it all. On That's purpose. what we were doing in Dover. We got off the ship to go into Dover and spend our pounds yes. on souvenirs because we weren't going to need them anymore. So we didn't save any for the taxi ride back, which we knew we could use our. We were going to use our card. But yeah, I did read that that they really that was a scam. That was a scam on his part. Yeah. So, but um, no, everybody offered to use. Um, Mom is very excited now that she's learned she can tap her I love card. That tap. It's great. She told it's everybody great. about it. Because Did you know just, you can tap your card? Because it's so fast and it's just better and easier. But it's not just in Europe. That's a thing everywhere now. Yeah, well, I found that out here too. Welcome to 2022. I like that. I like that tap. <laughs> so, it's faster. It is. Lady, can and you contact tap? us? So, all right. All right. Well, that is it. If you have any more questions, leave them down below. We probably will not do another celebration specific Q and A, but if we get enough video questions between this video and all of the pride videos, we may just do a cruise Q and A now and then. Um, I don't know when your next cruise is. We're going to Greece in the fall. No, no, we're going. Our oh, next we're going is in March. In March, we're where are we going? To the horizon. We're going to Aruba. And did we get a Havana cabin? We yes, talked about it. We yes. did. Lady yeah. and I are going to go. Lady is going to be my emotional support dog. <laughs> and she will emotionally support me. But we're going to Aruba. You know, I Bonaire. I joke about that, but you shouldn't do that. Only service yes. dogs should be brought in public places like that. It's actually yeah. a big problem. Carnival doesn't allow. I am aware of that. Animals. Because otherwise I would have Lady trained. But um, she can going, emotionally support me at home. We're going to Aruba, Bonaire, Grand Turk, and Amber Cove. Yeah. Out of Miami. I already bought a, our tickets to get down there, but I haven't. Uh, but we, we can't come, come back. back. I we're already got our tickets Miami. to come back, but I haven't got the ones to get down there yet. So All right. we're working on it. So we're going there. We're going to Greece in October. October. And you're going. And to I'm Alaska. going to Alaska in June With for dad. my birthday and Father's Day because. Well, it wasn't for that, but it's over that. My birthday is June 20th, and so every couple years it falls on Father's Day, but it's always around Father's Day. And so we're going to Alaska, because that's Dad's favorite place on the planet, and where I was born. So, But yeah. I haven't been to Alaska since I was like... Oh, you were little, like five. No. I No, Daddy took Second me grade. and Will... And I don't remember how old I was because instead of remembering Alaska, I just remember that as the trip where Will and I finally beat Rainbow Road and Mario. That you were in <laughs> kindergarten and Will, or you were in and first I, grade. I and I got Will in trouble in, for throwing snowballs in Will Will's face four. while he was doing a snow angel. Yeah, he was four and you were six. But that was the last time I've been to Alaska, so I don't really remember it. And I've never been to like. The southeastern part. The seen whales and bears and eagles part. Mm -hmm. So, dad is afraid of water. So, well, we talked him into going on a We'll cruise. see how this goes. But there's bears and whales and eagles. So, that's how I talked him into going. Yeah. Otherwise, would be a no go. Yeah. Ladybug, sugar booger. We're going to go now. We will see y'all in the next video. Leave your questions down below and we will try to answer them. Also, if you want to leave any questions, comments, concerns for the next couple cruises we have coming up, we will probably do question answer videos for those as well um, afterwards. But if we get enough questions, we'll do one before. So until next time. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Next bye -bye. time we'll do it on a couch because apparently the dogs have to be in the video. Yes. <laughs>